Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this week I want to talk to you about three things that you can think about to help you stop hitting the ground first when hitting your irons. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Okay, so if you're watching this video, it means that you're struggling with hitting the ground first or before the golf ball when using an iron. And this is so common and everyone always asks me why this is happening. So the three concepts I'm going to be talking about in this video are what I find are the three biggest reasons as to why it's happening to you and why people are struggling so much. So the first concept I want to talk about is the concept of having your weight forward. And I've stressed this in so many videos in the past, but I can't stress it enough. Um, so the first thing I always notice is after a golfer strikes the ball, they're not putting 100% of their weight on the lead side and they're not they're not moving their weight into the lead side enough early on in the downswing okay and what i'm also noticing is they don't finish ahead of the golf ball and you'll see that with a lot of good players or pretty much everyone is that you won't see anyone kind of stay like directly over the golf ball in the finish you'll definitely not see them kind of finishing behind but they will always finish more ahead of the golf ball um, when they've completed their swing. Okay, so I have this tool on the ground um, that I've been using recently with a lot of my students. And it's kind of a, a plate that kind of shows you where your weight is moving throughout the swing. And you can see as I'm shifting my weight kind of right or left, the plate's going to kind of lean to that side. Okay, so it's a really great um, form of reference for the player and a, a, maybe a, a physical and a visual one. Okay, so... Now, when I'm getting my players to use this for the first time, they are always very shocked to know how much of their weight they're actually leaving on the trail side. Okay, So obviously throughout the backswing, if you're shifting the majority of your weight, the plate's going to lean to that side. Okay, But what you want to make sure that you're doing, obviously, is, is if you're turning around your center more, that the plate is going to remain fairly even. Okay, It's not going to lean more so into one side. Okay, now if you want to feel the weight more evenly distributed across your feet, then you want to feel as though when you make your backswing that a slight majority of your weight would feel more so on the lead foot than usual. Okay, so that's only if you are a player that's used to having everything move into the trail foot more. Okay, so now that's only just going to be a feel, and you'll find when you record yourself from the free face on view that you won't actually be moving more into the lead foot okay you're going to feel as though there's there's more majority of your weight staying on the lead foot as you make your backswing but that's actually going to appear to look like your your weight is more evenly distributed across your feet okay so i'm going to hit one for you um and also record in slow motion just so you can see when my weight does move more and so into my lead foot okay so here i go So the other thing that you'll notice when using a tool like this is after you strike the golf ball, since it's going to be leaning to the lead side more, it'll actually force you to finish more ahead of the golf ball, which is really important. So um, I, I always get the feedback from my students and I ask them how much more do, like they feel towards the target. They always tell me they feel a lot more um, into the lead side than before. Okay, so you'll in, in terms of where the ball is, if I go really slow, I'm finishing totally ahead of where that ball was. I'm not finishing kind of directly on top of the ball. Okay, it's always going to be forward and ahead of the golf ball in the finish. So the second concept I want to show you guys or talk to you guys about is the movement of your trail shoulder throughout the downswing and the follow through. Now, if you try to shift your weight and you're doing it incorrectly, you'll you'll find that your hip just goes goes forward and your upper body moves back, and you don't want to be doing that. And how it relates to the trail shoulder is if you're doing that, you'll find that the trail shoulder actually doesn't, doesn't really move forward, actually kind of stays in the same place. So it actually kind of moves down and stays in the same place. And you definitely don't want to, want to see that trail shoulder move down and more backward, okay? 
So that, that'll give the pe- people the illusion that they're kind of shifting their weight left just because they're pushing their hip forward. But if you push your hip forward and actually move your upper body backward at the same time, you're also going to kind of move your low point really far behind the golf ball. Okay, so you're going to really kind of struggle with contact if you're doing that. But instead, if you're shifting your weight correctly from the top, pretty much everything is going gonna, is gonna to shift left together. But still, your, your, your lower body is going to lead a little bit ahead of your upper body. But as you get closer into impact and as you go through the shot, if you continue to rotate, then you'll find that this trail shoulder actually moves down and forward and then up okay, as you extend. Okay, so you want to focus on getting that trail shoulder to move forward through the shot. And if you can do that, that's actually also going to encourage you to turn more and actually encourage your body to finish ahead of the ball uh, when you reach your finish position. So if I hit another shot here, if I do it incorrectly, it's going to look like this. You can see that my trail shoulder kind of moves down and back or stays pretty much in the same place. See that my upper body actually moved maybe a little bit backwards. Okay, so whereas if I do it more correctly and shift my my body more to the lead side and make sure that my, my body continues to turn and extend as I do that, my trail shoulder is going to continue to move forward. Okay, and you can kind of see that, I, again, focusing on that trail shoulder moving forward, kind of down and forward and up. My, my body, again, is finishing ahead of the golf ball. Now, the third concept I want to talk to you guys about is about wrist angles at impact, okay? So what I find for, for a lot of players that struggle with contact the most, they will, tend to, they will tend to have a lot more flexion in the trail wrist and extension in the lead wrist uh, very early on in the downswing, kind of before they strike the golf ball. And the reason why that... that that is, makes it really difficult to make contact with the ball is because the more that the earlier on that you perform those movements, you can see that the longest point of my golf swing is, is, is formed well behind the golf ball. Okay. So if my longest point is formed behind the golf ball, then the low point again is going to move further behind the ball. So in order for a player to strike the ball, they're going to have to shorten out the longest point before they strike it in order for them to miss the ground. Um, and then, and then, hopefully strike the golf ball okay so in order for them to do that they're going to have to bend their arms more they're going to have to bend their wrists more and or they're going to have to change posture or some combination of those things so if they can time things correctly then maybe they can strike a few correctly but it it makes it very difficult and there's a lot of more a lot more variables there okay so the better ball strikers the ones that have the best control over their low point will tend to demonstrate the opposite okay so they'll tend to have a bit more extension in the trail wrist and a little bit more flexion in the lead wrist. Okay. Now you don't have to do it um, an insane amount, but you know, typically what you'll see with a lot of the better ball strikers is that their, their hands are kind of like over their lead thigh uh, near impact. Okay. And then just post impact, you'll, you'll see that the, 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 the radius forms there with the lead arm and the shaft, the longest point is after the golf ball uh, with an iron. So that will tell you, that you've successfully hit down on the golf ball. Um, whereas if you extend the radius out too early with uh, bad wrist angles, then you're probably gonna, not going to be able to hit down on it very much or as much. And you're probably going to have to really make a lot of compensation so that you don't strike the ground first. So there's two drills I can show you guys that will help you with wrist angles. And there's going to be one drill that focuses more so on the lead wrist and uh, the other drill that will focus, focus more on the trail wrist. So you can choose whichever drill that you want to work on based on if you want to you know, work on a certain wrist more than the other. But the, the first drill that I like to use to, that focuses more so on the lead wrist is where you would grip your uh, lead hand normally, and you're just going to place the palm of your trail hand directly on the side. Okay? Um, you're not going to wrap your fingers around it, but if I get closer to the camera, I'll show you that I, I'm basically just – putting my middle finger uh, along the side of the grip, okay? So I'm just placing my palm on it like that, okay? So, and you'll find that in order for you to strike the golf ball, you, you'll have to keep your palm on it, but you'll, it'll almost force the handle of the club to kind of get further away from you. And you'll find that it's, it's going to be easier for you to kind of hold on to the flex in that lead wrist. 
So when performing this drill, you just want to perform little pitches. So you're just going to get just stop to where your hands are just past your lead leg. Okay. And you don't want to do this. You don't want to see um, your, your trim hand come off of it. And you don't want to see that your lead wrist goes into extension. Okay. So if I pull up a ball and just do one demonstration for you guys. So my hands on the side. Okay. And I'm just gently going through it like that. I'm kind of holding it into this position. I'm just looking for my hand to be on it. I'm looking for the butt end to feel further away from me. And I'm looking for my lead wrist to have um, flexion in it still. Okay, so that's a really good one to kind of train you to hold on to flexion more through, through impact. And the second drill that you can work on that will focus more so on the trail wrist is you'll just grip the right hand on the, on the club normally, and you're going to see a bit of a space here on the, near the butt end. But you're just going to place the, the palm of your lead hand right, right on the butt end like this, okay? And when you're setting up, that's, that's actually going to act as a way to kind of keep the butt end forward. Okay, and when the butt end is forward, that will hold on to a lot of extension in the trail, in the trail wrist. Okay, so again, you're just going to do a little pitch. You're going to stop with your hands just past your lead leg. Okay, so a little demonstration here. Okay, palm on the butt end. You're just going to gently go through it like that. Okay, and you'll, you'll find that when you're swinging down, that when you, when you come in closer into impact, you'll feel that this lead, lead hand kind of pushes the grip forward. And it forces you to kind of have the shaft really far ahead. And that's going to really force you to hold on to a lot more extension in the trail wrist. Okay, so that's a really good one to kind of feel a bit of an exaggeration in, in how much extension you have to hold on. But if you're really struggling with a lot of flexion in that trail wrist, then this one's a great one to kind of, kind of train some exaggerated moves. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about my online lessons. I'll also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well. And if you have some extra time on your hands, I would encourage you guys to watch this video next. And it's a great video talking about footwork and how you should be spreading your weight across your feet throughout the swing.